Welcome to this new series called Classical Go Matches, where I'll go over some of the important games in the history of Go. I had a look on YouTube, but I couldn't find a lot of content in this area. But I feel that it is important for us to know these games as Go and Vicious for three reasons. First, to understand a bit of Go history and some of the famous players and the style of play. Otherwise, it is a bit hard to call yourself a Go and Vicious. Secondly, to see how Go theory has developed over the years, and in particular, it is interesting to see a lot of the old Drosekis that were abandoned for a while and are now back in trend. Thirdly, and most importantly, to learn some Go. The early versions of AlphaGo studied thousands of games, and I'm sure it would have grown from some of the ones that we're going to look at, just to get an appreciation of how professionals play. So without further ado, let's have a look at a game that I want to share with you guys today. It's a game between Honinbo Shushai and Go Sagan. It began on the 16th of October in 1933 and finished on the 29th of January 1934. This game is generally referred to as the game of the century, so it's a pretty important game for many reasons. In this game, Shu Shai took white as he is the more senior player. In fact, as the head of the Honinbo Go School and holder of the prestigious position of Meijin, Shu Shai was arguably the highest authority in Go at that time. He was pretty much the Dumbledore of the Go world in 1933. But that analogy perhaps is a little flawed as Shu Shai's swashmanship is often questioned. He is known to abuse his privilege as the more senior player, as he did in this game with Go Sagan, by adjourning the game whenever it was his turn to play and studying the game intensively with his students during the adjournment. He was also known to leave many games unfinished when there was a risk of losing. Go Sagan, on the other hand, tagging black in this game, was the new kid in town. He was a 19 year old. Go Prodigy that came from China. He won the special Nihon Kin tournament to have this opportunity to play a game against the Honinbo Shushai Meijin. Go Sagan was one of the proponents of the new Fuseki movement, and this is the game where his theory came head to head with the traditional ideas of the Honinbo Shushai. So, let the game begin. Alright, Black started off the game with a 3-3 point, White responded with a 3-4 point, Black played 4-4 star points, and White took another 3-4 point. We're probably fairly familiar with the 3-3 and even more so with the 4-4 point these days. It's pretty much standard opening we saw us in the corner, but back in those days, in 1933, the 3-3 three, three and 4-4 four, four points are pretty much forbidden moves. And so when Black played these moves, it caused a huge uproar in the Go community. Many said Go Sagan was being disrespectful to the Honinbo by playing moves like this. According to Go Theory at that time, uh, the corner is the largest, so the only way you can play in the corner is playing uh, enclosures like this, like the small knight enclosure or the large knight enclosure. But the new Fuseki movement sought to challenge the idea. What Go Sagan believed was that if you can occupy a corner with just one move, then why bother with two? So as I said, this game is very much about innovation clashing with traditions. And you can see that again with this move, the Tengen. It's obviously a very central influence focused move, which traditional theory has for too long underestimated. So White has never seen something like this before. Um, so what Shu Shai played was this, the shoulder hits, which is a good move. It's something that will still play today. So black extends, white extends, and black just slides underneath here. And is that still Joseki today? It where white try and keep the black stones low while it builds influence on the outside. So today to continue Joseki. 
white wood player move like this to continue building outside influence and building some sort of shape here. But white obviously haven't seen this Joseki, so it stuck to a uh, traditional theory and played the large knight enclosure here. What traditional theory said is that black should play a move to reduce that top corner for white. So making an enclosure is the biggest, so to stop your opponent from making an enclosure would also be very big. So black should play something like this according to traditional theory. But the new Fuseki movements uh, focuses on the center and the side. So it's about building frameworks. So consistent with that, Grace can play this move here and we can see some sort of black framework growing on the left hand side. And so when white saw this, it's happy to play the enclosure. If you're not approaching my corner, well, white is happy to just build this uh, enclosure on the top left hand corner. And you can see white has built some solid corners here with two enclosures, while black has uh, a framework on the bottom left hand corner here and it's a sizable framework uh, so we'll see how white decides to uh, reduce that black potential there white played this so it's stuck to the traditional theory um, in reducing the black framework so what shusha is thinking is that you can build all the framework you want it's not really black's territory yet it's just all speculative so i'm just going to take some solid third line territory and then i will invade your framework later and you'll be left with nothing and how does black respond it plays the cap to continue developing the center and white responded with this so it's a solid one space extension which it's a bit slow by today's standard. It's not a bad move, it's very solid. And white has a large knight enclosure here, uh, as, as opposed to a small knight. So perhaps this move can indirectly protect that corner. But today we'll probably play moves like this, or this, to kind of break up black's framework a bit earlier, because we really value the center a lot more. Uh, but white at that time was just adding them that black framework is nothing to be afraid of. So black kicked, white extended, and then black backed off to continue developing this center. And we'll see white approached again, exactly as the same it did on the left hand side. So you can see that it's very confident in its own theory that this is the best approach. And this time, black didn't kick. It played the two space jump. So again, this move emphasizes on the center, but there's just not enough pressure on the white stone there. So after the game, Grosseko himself thought that this move was too slow. So how we would play today would be an attachment like this. It seems a bit more natural to put a bit more pressure on the white stone while developing your outside influence. White harness, black pulls back, white pushes, black blocks. So this is a more natural way of uh, keeping the white stones low while building the black's influence. And so with this move, move 21, this was the last move from day one of the match. As mentioned, the Honinbo Shushai has the privilege to adjourn the game whenever he liked, and upon seeing this move, he decided it was a good time to go home and study the game with his students. So, in the next video, we will have a look at how the Honinbo Shushai will respond to this growing black framework that Go Sagan has developed.